Yeah, uh, I think the quarterback competition is is going really good right now. Um, and I think, you know, when we think of competition, uh, a lot of people, you know, think about, oh, here's the number one or who's the number two. And, and right now, you know, Colin and I are just competing and making each other better every single day. Uh, on and off the field, you know, we're doing devo devotions in the quarterback room. Um, and then on the field, you know, I'm helping him with footwork or he's helping me with certain stuff. Uh, so right now it's just back and forth, you know, iron sharpening iron. Um, when it comes to a specific date, you know, coach hasn't really – uh, specified anything like that, but we know we're just going to keep working. Um, and when the time comes, uh, we, we trust coach and, and we trust, you know, the best guy's going to play for this team. Go to Ben Briner. Hey, Ryan. Uh, hope, hope the summer treating you well. Uh, I kind of wanted to ask just what, how much offense were you sort of able to learn across the break and how much of a benefit did you feel like it was to be able to get some of those walkthroughs mm -hmm. uh, in, in sort of that uh, – once you guys got back. Yeah, I, I've, I learned a lot of the offense. Um, a lot of my time uh, was spent in those meeting rooms, uh, especially in the playbook. You know, when you don't have a football out there, it's, it's time to, you know, start cracking the playbook and knowing, you know, certain things that coach didn't teach us right away. Uh, you know, we advanced or I tried to advance and go into the playbook and start learning them on my own. Uh, so when the time came, you know, I was prepared for that. And uh, I think that during those walkthroughs, it was great for a lot of guys. It was great to see different looks, great to see, you know, what we're working, what we're trying to see, uh, what the purpose of every play is. Uh, and when you really look at the playbook, you understand those plays. Um, and it's really cool to see everything that coach is doing um, and why plays are working the way that they are, because uh, it gets us guys to trust in that. And uh, I think it's been really good for a lot of guys, and they've been cracking their playbooks. And you could tell for sure out there on the field. Um, but in short, to answer your question, I, I was, I've been in my playbook a lot during, during the break, and those walkthroughs are really, really beneficial. Eric Boynton. Ryan, thanks for your time today, first off. Could you just kind of address the, the kind of guy Colin Hill is personally, and, and when you see a guy fighting back from uh, not one, not two, but three torn ACLs, has his degree in hand, but still wants to keep playing, what does that say about him, and, and maybe just describe what it's been like to coexist with him here the last few months. Yeah, uh, I, I've gone, I've grown very fond of uh, Colin. And I think it's really cool to see in the quarterback room, we're all really, really close. Uh, we have a quarterback group chat uh, that we text in all the time. Coach Bobo is sending us videos of his son, you know, running touchdowns or Drew blocking at Hammond. Um, but when it comes to Colin, I mean, we were just in uh, the locker room the other day talking to each other, you know, about his knee um, and then my injury uh, that I had, I had sustained. And then we talked about, adversity that he's hit um, and it's just really cool to see a guy that loves football you know just as much as I do and whether he's on the field or he's you know on the sideline he just wants the best for the for the team he wants the best execution he wants 110 percent um, and then off the field he's just one of those guys that you know does things right which is which is what we want here at South Carolina of course and a lot of guys are like that and I think Colin has been a great addition to our quarterback room, uh, and I think he's been a great addition to a lot of guys, um, and he's helped from a leadership standpoint, of course, too, helping with you know learning the playbook um, and stuff like that. So it's been really good having him here, and, and we like him in the quarterback room and definitely throughout the team. Could you just expand on a little bit, how big a plus is it to have a guy, I know you've got competition now for the starting role, but how big a plus to have a guy come in with a new offensive coordinator that's been with him for four years and knows mm -hmm. the playbook? Yeah, I think the the benefit of that is just you know going being able to go to Colin and ask him you know maybe a coach uh, or question you know uh, you, coach might not have time for or you don't think you know coach uh, a quarterback might have a different answer than coach he might give you a couple different pointers uh, that that he's learned along the way because coach might say something you know that might be different and then you know we could expand off of that and talk about it uh, but I think somebody that's been in this offense you know for four years I think it's really great. Uh, for our quarterback room, you know, me being a sophomore, a true sophomore, uh, we have Jay, of course, and then we've got two younger guys, Connor Jordan, who's my year as well, and then um, Luke Doty is a freshman. So I think it's good having a guy that knows the offense um, and, is, and is willing to help uh, whenever we need it. Colin Taylor. I think we're, right now we're operating with a lot of confidence. Uh, we're operating with a lot of trust uh, because we know, uh, like I said earlier, we trust in this playbook. Uh, we trust in the purpose for every single play. We can see, you know, when we do it right, 
it's going to work. Uh, and I think it's just really exciting to see, you know, whoever's in there, uh, whoever it is, you know, that scheme is meant for us to be successful. And I think that's the most exciting part because all of us go out there and we have confidence in this play, you know, that it's going to work. And we have confidence, you know, if it doesn't, uh, we don't get the certain look, you know, we have certain things that we can work on and, and check to and all, like there's a bunch of motions and everything like that. And it's just super good to see guys being confident and trusting in that offense um, that, that Coach Bobo has, has come with to, to us with um, and just in a short amount of time. So it's pretty, pretty good, to, a good feeling as a quarterback. Uh, and I think a lot of good feelings around the offense, for sure. Dick Cox. Hi, Ryan. Hope you're doing well today. Could a two-quarterback system play you two quarterbacks work, or would you prefer they pick one quarterback and go and play? I, uh, I trust in everything uh, that Coach Muschamp or Coach Bobo decides. I, I think I could – I could do whatever they asked me to do. If they wanted me to go on kickoff, you know, like, like Luke or punt like Luke, uh, you know, I could go on kickoff. I could go on kickoff return. Uh, but I know Coach Muschamp uh, and Coach Bobo are going to put us in the best opportunity to win, and that's what everybody wants to do here in this building. Uh, so if they wanted us to have a two-quarterback system, great. If they wanted us to have one quarterback system, great. If they wanted us to have a three-quarterback system, great. If that's, the, if that's what they think we need to do to win, then let's do it. So I'm good with whatever Coach decides. Hale McGranahan. Hey, Ryan. I know there was a lot of talk in the spring about going under center and how that was a little different for you. How, mm -hmm. how have you continued to, to get used to that and, and sort of where are you at with, with mm -hmm. that process of picking that up? Yeah, um, of course, the coming from the West Coast and everything and, you know, being in shotgun and then a lot of being in shotgun last year, uh, going under center is a little different, of course. Uh, but I think, you know, from the spring to now, uh, I was just talking to Coach Shaw about it yesterday. Uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been really cool to see the progress uh, that, that we've made as a quarterback room and that I've made individually. Uh, you know, just a lot of the work is starting to pay off, and you can see that. Um, and a lot of this offense is based on timing and based on and stuff that you, you've got to get the footwork right. Uh, and we go in the indoor, and we do footwork more than, more than I, I could even say in a sentence right now. But that's what we need to do to be successful. Uh, and I'm extremely confident in that footwork now. Uh, I feel great on timing. I feel great on a lot of things. Uh, and and Coach, Coach Shaw sees it, sees the progression. Uh, but we definitely still got to get better. I think there's a lot of things that we can work on. Uh, but I think being able to go in shotgun and in, and under center and uh, do a lot of things like that is going to help our offense be more su successful. What, what's the most challenging part of, of being under center as opposed to shotgun or, or learning to be under center? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing for a lot of quarterbacks when being under center uh, is just your eyes and seeing coverages and stuff like that. You know, when you're under center, uh, it's hard to see safety rotation sometimes. Uh, when you turn your back, you know, on drops, certain things like that, you know, it's hard to see if a corner cat's coming. It's hard to see some things like that. But we have tips. We have things that we've been working on, you know, that help us with that. Uh, but I think it's the biggest thing for a lot of quarterbacks is just seeing coverages and stuff versus, you know, be, being in the gun and being able to stand tall and see all that stuff. But, but Coach Bobo has a lot of tips. You know, he's, he definitely knows he played quarterback. He has all those things. He's seen all of those things under center. So, it's good to have those tips, uh, but I would say that's the biggest difference. Mike Kuba. Hey, Ryan. Um, of course, last year was a little bit different in terms of, you know, you're competing for that, that second job. You end up winning that, and, of course, you know, the rest was history from there when you had to step in for Jake. But when you look back to last year, how much can that help you in terms of just handling a situation in terms of being able to compete for, for a job, but at the same time, too, you're doing it and you're trying to, like you said, iron sharp and iron. How much can you rely, rely back on last year to help you this year? Yeah, I think last year uh, it was a really good experience. I, I think, you know, going in, you know, Jake was an older guy, uh, just like Colin is now. Um, and both of those guys have helped me tremendously become a better quarterback and better person. Uh, but taking just from last year and, you know, going into this year, um, it's just – made me you know, realize that I, I can only control what I can control. I can go in every single day. Um, I'm the one that prepares. You know, nobody else prepares for me. Uh, you know, I'm the one that reads the playbook. I'm the one that's out there doing the footwork. I'm the one you know, that throws the good balls or, or throws a bad ball, whatever it is. Uh, and I think that's a big thing that I've realized since last year is you know, I've got to control what I can control, and I've got to rely on those 10 other dudes on that field to do what they got to do, and they can control what they can control. And then you know, 11 works with each other, and uh, it's a thing of beauty for sure. So 
Uh, I've realized that, and I trust in, in our guys, and, and I'm confident going out there every time. Jen Del Bianco. Hey, Ryan, you've mentioned Luke a couple of times already. Can you talk about what you've seen from him as a quarterback, as a freshman, and also what, you, what chemistry you two have been able to form when he's out at wide receiver? Yeah, Luke is a, he's a special guy. I was uh, driving Marshawn Lloyd home the other day uh, to 650, and I was uh, talking to him about Luke, and we've hung out a bunch of times. But uh, Luke, Luke is, a, is definitely a special guy. He, he has a lot on his plate, uh, and he's literally taking all of it and running with it, and he's doing a tremendous job uh, learning the playbook uh, and, and playing quarterback and playing wide receiver. You know, one time he goes from quarterback, and then he'll go into the next huddle you know, as a receiver, and it just, he doesn't get tired, and he just keeps working no matter what. Um, and I remember I hosted him on an official visit uh, here, and I remember taking him out to my lake house, um, just hanging out with him there, having a good time with him. Uh, and it was just really cool, you know, to see and bond with him, you know, on a personal level outside of football, uh, to see what kind of guy he was, of course. And then, of course, you see him on the field being a hard worker, um, doing everything that's asked of him. So uh, he's a guy that we, we like having around here. Um, and is always positive. I haven't heard a negative thing out of, come out of his mouth yet. So it's really, really cool to see that. John Whittle. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan, you've always been a, a guy who has been, you know, very accessible, very involved in a lot of things away from the football field. How have you kind of, over the last year and coming into this year, after going through your first year, how have you kind of changed time management, if at all? Or how do you? How do you feel like you, you manage your time now differently as opposed to when you first got here? Yeah, uh, I think uh, when a lot of uh, freshmen, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but freshmen, you know, of course, they're excited to get to college. Uh, they're excited to be on a football team. They're excited, you know, to see all of this um, glamour, if you will. And I think as a freshman, you know, I was, I was excited to be here. I was excited to do everything that I could. And then, of course, I got the starting job. Um, and I think just the biggest thing that, you know, right now for me, is that I've, I'm off social media. Uh, like, I haven't been on social, like, people were talking about stuff on Twitter the other day, and I didn't even know about it. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing for me, too. Uh, it just gives me a lot more time to focus on what needs to be done here, uh, what needs to be, you know, focused on on this building. And uh, I think that's just winning, of course. And then off the field stuff, like, you know, Holinsky's Hope, we're still, I'm still involved in. I do Zooms with my parents and stuff like that. And I, I talk to them as much as I can. Um, and I do videos with Jay to certain people like that. But um, I think the biggest thing is just not being as public as I was about it and just focusing, you know, on what needs to be done in this building to win ball games, um, and then focusing on what's really important outside of this building. David. Yes, sir. David. Heard a lot about Eric Douglas uh, really playing well at center uh, during this preseason. What have you seen from him? Uh, just how comfortable are you out there with him? Uh, Eric is—he's uh, a good friend of mine. He's, he's definitely a quarterback's best friend, uh, and I think Eric's really, really intelligent, and he understands this offense. He—he uh, he understands, you know, when certain guys are in certain techniques, or if they see a, you know, a spinner look or something, you know, that's different than. What we normally see, Eric, you know, if I'm confused, Eric's going to be like, hey, we're going to go do this, we're going to go do that. I'm like, okay, I understand that. And if, you know, I want to talk about it after the play, Eric comes right over to me, talks to me about it. Um, and we always play, you know, uh, video games maybe just for an hour or so at night. Uh, and I always talk to Eric. Usually it's about football. A lot of it's about coverages and what we saw that day, uh, certain fronts and what we can work on the next day. So it's, it's good to have a center, you know, that loves to work hard, but it's also good to have a center, you know, that's intelligent and understands the playbook, you know, almost the same as or as much as the quarterback. So it, it's been really good to have Eric uh, step up big time this, this fall camp. Ben? Uh, so two questions. First, compared to last year's offense, how different is sort of what you're asked to do in terms of managing and coordinating at the line of scrimmage? And second... Um, I think you guys didn't huddle last year, and I think you guys are supposed to be doing that this year. What is that like managing a huddle in college for the first time? Yeah, um, I think it, it, this offense demands perfection. Uh, Coach, we were just talking about it with Coach Bobo uh, yesterday. It demands perfection, um, and, you know, we're going to fall short. 
sometimes, uh, and but we want to get there every single time as much as we can. And if we're going to have a couple mistakes, but what we have to do is strive for perfection. And you know, we're, we're going to have to make certain calls. We're going to have to check certain things. We're going to have to see safety rotation. We're going to have to see if it's a shade or that shade and check to certain things and do all of those things. But the cool thing about that is, um, is when you're confident in that and you go up to that line of scrimmage uh, with those linemen that are confident in you and those receivers that are confident in you and the running back that's confident in you and you have 11 working with 11, I mean, it, it's really exciting to see uh, some of the things that we can do. Uh, and then from a huddle standpoint, uh, we huddled, yeah, rarely last year. Um, I think, but the biggest thing, you know, going into a huddle this year is, you know, you get to talk to the guys, you know, a little bit before a play, you know, whether it's just a little subtle message saying, hey, let's get after it, or hey, like, got 10 plays here, or hey, you know, we got just one drive down the field, let's get to work, you know, we got to get seven here, we got to get a field goal, we got two timeouts, we got whatever it is, you know, you can talk to those guys um, and just take, take a breath, you know, rather than just being a little bit spread out from each other and just relaying a little bit of a message, um, which, which we, you know, we're excited to do and we're going to do a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but I think, you know, being in a huddle uh, more than last year, it's just really beneficial to us and our communication as a team. Eric Boynton. Yeah, I want to ask you about a couple of guys, a couple of pass catchers, Shai Smith, uh, and also Nick Buse, obviously, without Brian Edwards and, and Mark Way deciding to move on, two guys that were big factors uh, last year. What have you kind of seen from Shai Smith as far as going next to level? And how about Nick as he uh, continues to work back from the knee? Yeah, um, th those guys, of course, Brian and, and um, Mark Way were just awesome. I love those guys. I was excited for Nick the other day. I mean, sorry, Kyle Mark Way the other day about signing. Uh, but I think, you know, with Shai and Nick, uh, stepping up, they they've done a lot of a lot of good things for us uh, so far in this fall camp, and I know they're gonna keep getting better. Uh, but I think you know, shy with his speed um, and everything that he could do off the line and just beating guys, uh, I think he's gotten more intelligent too with this offense and this playbook, uh, and he's gotten more confident in his abilities too, which is really cool to see. Because when you see a guy play with confidence, um, he's dangerous and he can beat a lot of guys. So. Shai stepped up big time for sure, and he's become more of a leader uh, in the wide receiver room, which is really good, you know, because we need a lot of guys that, that need that, need, you know, motivation and stuff like that. And when it comes to Nick, uh, I mean, see a guy that I threw the ball to um, in the Vanny game and then go and see what happened to his knee when I'm right behind him. Uh, it made me sick to my stomach because he was my good friend. Uh, he still is my good friend, of course. We play video games. I was hanging out at 650 with him all the time. Um, and to see him come back, you know, as, as good as he is right now, uh, it's really cool to see him working hard um, and just buy, buying into this offense and just doing it with a smile on his face every single day. Because uh, when you have a guy like that, you know, a, a tight end is a QB security blanket. Uh, it's just really good to have Nick Muse out there. And like I said, it, this offense requires a lot of intelligence. Uh, Nick's definitely got that. He's playing with confidence. Um, he, he's making cuts, which is really good, and uh, I, I'm just really confident in his ability making right now for us. We got just a couple more yes, minutes, so if you're not in the queue already, uh, we'll get to these questions in the queue, but no more after that. Uh, Dick, go ahead. And you really went through a lot last year. Can you talk about how your faith helped get you through maybe those tough times you went through? Yes, sir. Uh, I think. I think definitely last year uh, was a lot, and uh, I think, I mean, we talk about it every day in the quarterback room. Uh, you know, you gotta you gotta rely on stuff um, outside of, of football, and I think you know that'll make you whole as a person. And and I've grown in my faith, you know, a lot. Uh, with Jay Urich and I get coffee uh, every morning at 8:30, usually on Wednesdays. Hopefully, if we have time, um, and we'll we'll go in and we'll have you know a couple things. We'll talk about life, and then you know we dive into a uh, little bit of devotions. Uh, we dive into what's going on in our lives and, and how we can get better and, and how we can keep our mind on track. But I think last year, um, especially with, you know, all the games that happened and then, of course, off the field stuff and uh, just thinking about Tyler in my first year of college, uh, it, was, it was crazy for sure, uh, but that's, that's college football for a quarterback. And, and I think that faith like you're talking about now um, has been great for me. I talked to my priest. His name's Father Charles. I was just talking to him yesterday, my middle school priest. Um, and I've been talking to him since seventh grade. I pray for him, or I pray with him uh, before every game still. Uh, and I think that faith that you're talking about uh, has been 
has been working and I'm still growing in it. Uh, but I think it's, it's good to have that um, and, and share it with my teammates for sure. Hill McGranahan. Brad Muschamp said several times, or he's mentioned several times, that, that you all have had a bunch of explosive plays uh, so far during camp. What What's allowed you all to, to kind of have an uptick in those? Is it the scheme, the speed of receiver, um, you and Colin just being comfortable with the offense, combination and everything? What, what's allowed you all to make that happen? Yeah, no, um, it's it's been a combination of everything. It's, it's been... Um, like I said, confidence uh, in everything that we're doing right now. I think it's confidence in the receiver or the tight end's ability making. You know, him going out there and saying, I've got this route, I'm going to run it this hard, I've got it versus this technique, um, this is how I'm supposed to run it. Ryan's going to throw me the ball, or I'm the second progression here, I'm the third progression here uh, line. You know, if we've got a walk up, you know, we're going to pick him up, we're going to do this, we've got that and certain protections. And I think that. That's the cool thing that I see right now is all of us gelling together and understanding, you know, what we're working for. And I think that's the thing that's, you know, allowing those explosives to happen uh, because the defense is, you know, they're making plays, of course. Um, but I think it's, it's good to see uh, all of our guys just being confident and knowing what they're doing, being confident in their ability making um, and just knowing the offense as a whole, um, being able, you know, like, like you said, Colin and I being able to, be, feel smooth and feel confident in you know, our progressions and where we're going with the ball and our running backs hitting certain holes and, and everything like that and who our linemen are working to. So I would say it's a combination of both. But again, I come back to confidence um, and just being, being excited you know, about this offense going into every day. Without giving away too many of the specifics, is there one play in particular that really got everybody fired up or one that really sticks in your mind? Yeah, I, Kevion, Kevion Mullins has, ha, has been having a good fall camp, um, and, and he's, he's progressed every single day. Um, and I think, you know, just seeing him every single day, day in and day out from walkthrough to the end of practice, um, I mean, just seeing him catch, you know, long balls, um, whether it be a corner out or something like that, uh, it's just really cool to see the whole team, you know, start jumping up and get hyped and start screaming uh, for a guy like that. You know, no matter who it is, um, to go over there and as offense as a whole, you know, get 50 guys, 30 guys, whatever it is, you know, in a circle, happy for one guy. Um, as, that's really cool to see as a quarterback and, of course, as an offense, you know, being a family and being excited for one another. Colin Taylor. As a guy that was in this offense last year and is now kind of seeing some of the tweaks that they're they're putting in now, I guess how would you define a successful offensive season for you guys? What does an offense that's successful in year one under Mike Bobo look like to you? Yeah, I think um, I mean Coach Bobo just touched on it. Uh, we we want to every time we step into Williams Bryce, uh, we want to bust the scoreboard, and I think that's the, that's the thing that that coach wants us to do. We want to bust the scoreboard. We want to go out there. Um, and, and do everything that we can uh, that we prepared for in that week uh, with the utmost confidence um, and just go out there and do what we've been practicing. Go out there and, and execute. Um, and then, like I said, bust the scoreboard. And then in the end, you know, we trust our defense. We trust Coach Muschamp and everything that they're doing. Um, and we just want to win ball games. So I, I think in answer to your question, we want to ensure bust the scoreboard um, and win football games uh, big, big time. The last question for Ryan goes to Phil Cornblit. Hi, thanks. Um, just to follow up on that question, which is perfect, um, what, uh, you know, the expectations for you guys is not very high. You know, pick near the bottom of the league and all that kind of stuff. Over, under on wins is like three and a half. Mm -hmm. And you know you got a very difficult schedule. <clears throat> what makes you guys think you're going to be better than everybody says you'll be? Well, I, I don't really, uh, I didn't even know about the over under anything like that. Um, but I think, you know, if, if anybody heard that on our offense, uh, we, we don't like the word uh, think, not, not into reference to your question, but we like the word no. Uh, and that comes back to confidence and what I've been talking about. We know uh, when we step out onto that field, we're going to get points on the board. We know when we go out there, we're going to win f football games. We know when we step into williams Bryce, we're going to bust the scoreboard like coach, is, coach always says. You know, we know all of these things about the offense, um, and we're excited. Uh, we, don't, we don't care what anybody, um, what anybody says, whether it's over, under, or whatever it may be, uh, because we all care about each other. Uh, we have confidence in each other. We have confidence in this offense. Um, and the biggest thing I think this year is we've had a lot 
of love for the state of South Carolina. Um, and we want to do a lot, you know, for the state and win football games for the name, um, of course, on the back of our jersey, but of course, more, you know, a lot importantly, too, uh, in the name on our front of our jersey, which is South Carolina. And I think a lot of guys want to do that and go out there and if you care what anybody else says, as long as we go out there and execute and do what coach tells us, we trust it and we trust that we're going to win football games together. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate thanks, it.